Good morning. Welcome to each and every one of you. Welcome in the name of our Lord Jesus. What a difference a week makes, huh? Uh, you know, last Sunday we probably weren't even thinking unless it was a, almost an emergency of stepping outside. Uh, but today, today everything is, is very, very different. And it's a, a reminder to us that, you know, the, the outward circumstances of our lives can change, and they can change in a big hurry. Uh, but there is that constant that is always there for us, a constant that we can count on, and that is our Lord's love and the promises that he gives to us. And that's really why uh, historically this Sunday of the Christian church year goes by the Latin title of jubilate. Uh, it's the word jubilation, our English word jubilation. It's rejoicing. And it's the reminder that we always have reason to rejoice. No matter what our outward circumstances might be, we have reason to rejoice in the promises of our Lord. So let's begin our worship with our opening hymn where the psalm writer in essence speaks about that. Uh, it's hymn 156, Awake my heart with gladness, with joy, with rejoicing. So uh, we will sing the first four stanzas of hymn 156 uh, at this time. So God be with you all and bless you as we worship him today. Please stand. To guide our worship today, we follow the order of service on page 38 in the front part of your hymnal, the service of the word. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. 
we have come into the presence of God, who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all of your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. In the peace of this forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed are they who take refuge in him. Your word, O oh Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. Your faithfulness continues forever. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed are they who take refuge in Him. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, by the humiliation of your Son, you lifted up this fallen world from the despair of death. By his resurrection to life, grant your faithful people gladness of heart and the hope of eternal joys through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The congregation may be seated. Our scripture lessons for this Jubilate Sunday remind us that we do have real reason to rejoice in our God and the, the very gifts that he gives to us. Our Old Testament lesson is recorded for us in the book of 2 Kings. This is chapter 20, starting here at the first verse. Uh, this is an incident that took place uh, particularly focusing on one of the kings of Judah uh, named Hezekiah, one of the few good and godly kings. Um, but uh, the, the Lord sent his prophet to him, to, telling him that uh, his time on this earth was drawing to a, a close rather quickly. Uh, but we see how Hezekiah uh, brought his, his request before the Lord and how the Lord in his mercy and love answered his prayer. In those days, Hezekiah became ill and was to the point of death. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to him and said, This is what the Lord says, Put your house in order, because you are going to die. You will not recover. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord, Remember, O Lord, how I have walked before you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion and have done what is good in your eyes. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Before Isaiah had left the mid middle court, the word of the Lord came to him. Go back and tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people, this is what the Lord, the God of your father David, says. I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will heal you. On the third day from now, you will go up to the temple of the Lord, 
I will add 15 years to your life and I will deliver you and this city I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria I will defend this city for my sake and for the sake of my servant David Then Isaiah said prepare a poultice of figs they did so and applied it to the boil and he recovered Hezekiah had asked Isaiah, What will be the sign that the Lord will heal me and that I will go up to the temple of the Lord on the third day from now? Isaiah answered, This is the Lord's sign to you, that the Lord will do what he has promised. Shall a shadow go forward ten steps or shall it, sh shall it go back ten steps? It is a simple matter for the shadow to go forward ten steps, said Hezekiah. Rather, have it go back ten steps. Then the prophet Isaiah called upon the Lord, and the Lord made the shadow go back ten steps as it had gone down on the stairway of Ahaz. This is the word of our Lord. Let's continue now with the psalm of the day. It is Psalm 98, which you find on page 103 in the front part of your hymnal. Let's sing together Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. Sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of singing. Shout for joy before the Lord the King. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples with equity. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever Amen. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Our reading from the New Testament letters is recorded for us by the Apostle Paul in the letter that he wrote to the believers in the city of Philippi. This is Philippians chapter 3, starting here at verse 13. Uh, we'll come back to this word of God for our sermon today. Paul writes this. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. All of us who are mature should take such a view of things. 
And if on some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. Only let us live up to what we have already attained. This is the word of our Lord. Let's join together now in the singing of the verse of the day in song. It's on the middle of page two of this morning's bulletin. I'm the way to heaven above. I'm the truth of God's great love. I'm the life that never ends. Trust in me alone, dear friends. Please stand now for the reading of our gospel lesson. The Holy Gospel is recorded for us by Matthew. This is in chapter 9, starting here at verse 14. As, as Jesus is here talking about the, the transition between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, uh, he speaks here and he reminds us that we have reason for joy. Uh, he talks here about the, the guests of the bridegroom. Uh, and that's, that's the believers in the Lord and how we rejoice uh, in his presence that even though he has withdrawn his visible presence from us, still we rejoice knowing that his presence is with us. I'll start here at verse 14. Then John's disciples came and asked him, how is it that we and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast. Jesus answered, how can the guests of the bridegroom mourn while he is with them? The time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them, then they will fast. No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch will pull away from the garment, making the tear worse. Neither do men pour new wine into old wine skins. If they do, the skins will burst. The wine will run out and the wine skins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wine skins and both are preserved. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated once again as we continue with our next hymn. It's hymn 401, Your Works Not Mine, O Christ, hymn 401.
peace to you and power in the name of our living Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As I mentioned, it is a portion of our epistle lesson today from Philippians 3 that we especially want to focus on. Listen again to these two verses. Paul writes, Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. This is the word of our Lord. Let's bow our heads in prayer. O oh Lord Jesus, our Savior, we thank you for that victory which you have won for us. We ask, Lord, that you would ever dwell in our hearts through the power of your promises and your, wor and your word. Lord, equip us for lives of, of thankful service to you in all that we say and think and do. Lord, we pray this all in your name. Amen. In the name of Jesus, our living Lord and Savior, fellow people involved in the race that the Lord has placed before us. It's been a pretty tough start to the spring sports seasons for a lot of the student athletes, not just in our area, but all through the Midwest, hasn't it? You know, the, the blizzards and the snowstorms uh, have, have vastly impacted so many of the events that have been scheduled for, for teams like track and field, uh, for tennis teams, for golf teams, and you know, just all of those, those spring sports. I'm sure there have been hundreds of events that have been canceled and postponed because, uh, well, everything has been forced inside, you know, and, and uh, coaches have been compelled to come up with creative ways to uh, keep their athletes on task and focused and in shape and, and all of those things. And now that it seems like spring is finally here, uh, you know, now a lot of those events are starting to take place and the, the student athletes are getting outside for their, their competitions and things like that. And it becomes more and more evident what it takes to be successful in those endeavors. Well, what does it take to be successful? For example, for a runner running a race. Well, obviously, you know, the natural God-given ability certainly is a big factor there. Besides that, there is the importance of, of training and conditioning and all of those things. But there's another feature that, that oftentimes people overlook, and that is uh, a, a deep concentration on the goal. And that's so important for a runner who is running a race. And in the Word of God before us this morning, the Apostle Paul borrows that imagery from the sports world and he, he applies it to our lives as the people of God, to our lives as we, we strive to live for our Lord in thanksgiving and praise for all that he has done for us. And so this morning, as we celebrate this jubilate, this Rejoice Sunday, uh, the Lord is instructing us through the, the power of his, his word, and he's calling to us to continue to rejoice in Jesus as we press on toward the goal. And here he especially gives us two directives. First of all, he tells us to rejoice, first of all, forgetting what is behind. Listen to what Paul says here. He says, Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. Paul's saying, you know, I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet in my life. We call it our lives of sanctification, our lives as, as we live in response to God's love for us in Christ. 
but he says, I, I recognize I'm not there yet. He recognized the, the sinful nature that he had within his own heart, that every one of us has. And so, so our lives of sanctification are not perfect. As, as some uh, apparently in the city of Philippi were trying to claim that you can reach this, this status of, of perfection in a, a life of service to the Lord while here on earth. Paul says, that's not me. And the truth is, it's not anybody here in this world because every one of us has that sinful nature within us. But he says, brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal. And that's so important for a runner who is running a race to, to not be distracted by all of the, the distractions and, and to, to focus on the goal. He says, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. He said, I, I press on. That, that one thing, I, I press on toward the goal. Now, what, what was Paul talking about when he talked about, about forgetting what is behind? Now, obviously, Paul was very well aware of his past. And that must have been uh, quite a burden to him. You know, it's not that God wiped his memory clean about, about his past life. In fact, just a few verses before this, the Holy Spirit led him to talk about his life before Jesus had called him to faith there on that road to Damascus. Uh, Paul writes what his, his life was about. He, he talks here about being a Hebrew of the Hebrews in regard to the law of Pharisee. As for zeal, persecuting the church. As for legalistic righteousness, faultless. You know, in his old life as a Pharisee, he, he dedicated himself to, to hunting down the Christians and, and throwing them in prison. And that, that had to be something that, that weighed heavy on his heart. And when he thought about that, he probably even remembered that with tears in his eyes. But still, still Paul speaks about pressing on toward the goal and forgetting what was behind. How could he do that when he remembered all of that? Well, what he's really talking about is, is that he simply left it in the hands of the Lord. That he knew his past, his, his past of, of being a, a violent persecutor of Christ in his church but he simply left that in the hands of the Lord, knowing that that's why Jesus came, that that's why Jesus laid down his life on the cross, to win forgiveness for him too. And so he knew that, that in that, that ledger book of, of God's holiness and God's knowledge, all about every detail of our lives, he knew that Paul knew that he was right with God through faith in Jesus because his account had been marked paid in full and it was written in the blood of the Savior Jesus Christ. And so he simply left it in his hands knowing, knowing that all had been paid for. Forgetting what is behind. Or, or perhaps Paul may have thought in terms of, of sins of the past in another way. Now remember, after Jesus did call him to faith, remember the tremendous privilege that God gave to Paul. God called him, who once was a persecutor of the church, now to be the apostle to the Gentiles. None of the other apostles had that. That, that kind of calling from the Lord. You know, not, not even that inner circle of disciples, Peter or James or John, no, no, it was the Apostle Paul who was called by Jesus to be the Apostle to the Gentiles. 
and I have to think that would have been a, a tremendous temptation to have have sinful pride about that. Simple, sinful pride in who I am and what I do. But Paul says, forgetting what is behind. Forgetting what is behind. Those sins of our past. How do we feel about that? As we so often are so conscious of our, our failures and our sins against the Lord in the past. And, and, and doesn't it so often work that it might just take the mere mention of a word and just like that our minds go back to, to some regret of, of a sin or a load of sins that we've committed in the past. Or maybe we just go to a certain place or we see a certain face of a, an individual and, and it just brings this, this flood of guilt to us about things from our past the, uh, the sins that we have committed, the failures that we are so so painfully aware uh, are there in our lives. And, and I'm, I'm convinced that that's one of the, the powerful temptations that the devil throws against God's people. To try to make us feel guilty of sins in the past that we know Jesus died for, that Jesus has forgiven. Paul says, forgetting what is behind. How do we forget that when it, it just comes so easily and so quickly to our minds? Well, that's why we need to continue to go back to the message of Jesus' gospel. The news of his forgiveness. We need to hear it over and over again. Those, those words, for example, that, that were spoken over us at our baptisms when Jesus claimed us as his own dearly loved children in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And we need to think about that and we need to hear those words over and over again. And we need to hear, hear those words of the absolution in in the place of and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And we need to hear it over and over again. And we need to come to the Lord's altar and, and hear Jesus say to us over and over again, this is my body, this is my blood given and shed for you for." forgiveness of sins. And, and that's how we press on toward the goal. We press on toward the goal forgetting what is behind because we know Jesus has taken care of that. Our sins are paid for. They're washed away. They're gone because of what Jesus our Savior has done for us. And so he calls to us to rejoice in Jesus. Rejoice as we press on toward the goal. Rejoicing even while we forget what is behind. But he also tells us to rejoice while straining toward what is ahead. Paul writes here, One thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. That's so important for a runner in a race, isn't it? To, to focus on the goal. If, if a runner loses focus on that, uh, they're in trouble. They need to focus on the goal, and that's what... That's what the Apostle Paul is saying here. He says, there's one thing I do, straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal. But you know, we, we know that, that the devil is there with his temptations and the sinful world around us and the sinful nature within our hearts so often want to, to distract our, our focus on the goal. 
and so often trying to, to lead us to, to focus on the things of the here and now, the things of this world. You know, and maybe it's, it's just the comforts of life in this world or the possessions of things of this world or, uh, or maybe trying to preserve our youth in this world or, or preparing for our retirement or enjoying our retirement or, or whatever it might be. Now, notice none of those things in and of themselves are wrong necessarily or are, are necessarily sin, but when the focus of our faith is diverted from the goal, that's when we have troubles. That's when we have problems. And Paul says, this one thing I do, straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. That's our goal. Our ultimate goal is being with our Lord and Savior forever. And that's why God calls us to continually feed our faith. To feed our faith with that, that nourishing, that faith-building message of His Holy Word. To, to immerse ourselves in the gospel of our Savior. To, to focus ourselves, our spiritualized eyes on that prize for which God has called us heavenward in Christ Jesus. So it's no wonder Paul calls us to rejoice. To rejoice because he's given us so many reasons to rejoice. He calls us to rejoice in that forgiveness and salvation that Jesus has won for us. And he urges us then to press on toward the goal as we, we live our lives for him. Forgetting those things that are behind, straining toward what is ahead as we serve our Lord in thankfulness and praise to Him. So may the Lord continue to bless us through His gospel as we run the race that the Lord has placed out before us. Forgetting those things that are behind, those, those regrets that we have and the feelings of guilt of the past because Jesus has washed those all away and straining toward what is ahead, that goal, that free gift of salvation which Jesus gives to us only by his grace. So may our hearts be filled with true joy as we run the race that the Lord has placed before us. Amen. Please stand. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. If you'd please open your hymnals now to page 41 in the front part of your hymnal, you'll find there in the middle of the page the Apostles' Creed. Let's make confession of our Christian faith with this creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The congregation may be seated once again as we now worship our Lord with our offerings.
please stand for prayer. And if you would open your hymnal to page 42 in the front part of your hymnal, uh, the service of the word there, you'll find at the top of the page the prayer of the church, a responsive prayer. Uh, let us pray. Lord God, our maker and preserver, we praise and thank you for all that you give us day after day. You have given us your precious word to nourish our souls and to pre protect us from the temptations of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. We thank Heavenly Father, we pray that you shield us from every kind of danger, sudden catastrophe, terrors of crime, and the pain of disease. Watch over those who travel by land, sea, and air. Keep our loved ones from whatever perils may threaten them. Bless our land, our people, and those who hold offices of high trust. Keep our government and schools upright and strong for the advancement of good citizenship and useful vocations, that we may enjoy your gifts of peace, security, and well-being. And Lord, grateful of your mercies, we also bring you our special prayers. Lord, we pray for those who are dealing with matters of health. We pray for Mr. Ron Schmidt, who has now been transferred from the Sanford Hospital in Sioux Falls to Dismit, for Pastor Ken Brockmeyer, for Travis and Kyla Scott, uh, whose baby is due soon, and uh, Kyla's dealing with gestation diabetes. For Marilyn Schwanbeck, Helen Schmidt's sister, who is hospitalized in Watertown. For pastor, uh, retired Pastor Gail Johnson, who formerly served in our area, who recently suffered a heart attack. And also Mrs. Rita Bader, uh, my mother, who was uh, in the hospital in Omaha and released recently. Lord, we ask that you would continue to watch over all of these children of yours with your loving care. Lord, we thank you for, for those who uh, are on the, the road to healing and recovery. Uh, Lord, we ask for your grace and mercy to all of them, uh, that especially you would strengthen their confidence in your promises of your presence with them, your blessing upon them, and your grace and mercy to them. Lord, we ask that you would bless those who uh, attend them with medical care. Uh, Lord, give them wisdom and guidance uh, from you and you alone. Lord, we commend them all to your loving care. And Lord, we also add our prayer of thanksgiving together with your believers at Zion Lutheran Church and School in Valentine, Nebraska, as they celebrated recently their 75th anniversary of their Lutheran Elementary School. Lord, we thank you for the, the nurturing of your lambs and sheep uh, through the ministry of this school. And Lord, we ask for your continued blessings upon them for the future. And Lord, we also give you our thanks and praise for the uh, amazing mission opportunity uh, which you have laid before us as a church body uh, to share the gospel message with uh, the inhabitants of the nation of Vietnam. Lord, we thank you for this open door and we ask that uh, you would bless us in our endeavors to share your good news of salvation with the millions of people there. Lord, 
We bring all of these prayers before you in your holy name, and we gather all of our petitions together in the prayer which you yourself have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The congregation may be seated once again as we join together in our next hymn. It's hymn 169, Welcome Happy Morning, hymn 160, excuse me, 163, 163. Please stand once again for our closing prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for teaching us the things you want us to believe and do. 
Help us by your Holy Spirit to keep your word in pure hearts that we may be strengthened in faith, guided in holiness, and comforted in life and in death through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Receive with peace and joy in your heart the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated for our closing hymn stanza, and if you turn back to our opening hymn, hymn 156, let's join in singing stanza 5 of Awake My Heart with Gladness, 156. By the way, first of all, welcome back, Eris. It's good to have you have you back here. We appreciate your playing today. Uh, most of the announcements, I think, are, are in the, the bulletin for this morning. I'd especially direct your attention to a couple of things there. Uh, one is the, the report of our district president uh, at the recent pastor's conference. Just quite a, a bit of information there. Uh, uh, also, a, a reminder that, or information that uh, if, uh, especially for those who may have wanted to go to yesterday's Lutheran Women's Missionary Society fall, uh, Spring Rally, and were not able to be there, uh, there at Clear Lake uh, at uh, Trinity Lutheran, they did record that presentation, and I looked yesterday afternoon, it wasn't posted yet, but it will be on YouTube, so if anybody would like to to see that and hear that, um, I think if you would just search on YouTube for uh, Trinity Lutheran Church of Clear Lake, South Dakota, I, I think you could find it. Uh, anyway, I probably can find a, a more exact address if, if that does not work for you. Uh, I'd also uh, like to, to direct your attention to that report and uh, the front page story of the Together newsletter here about the opportunity uh, in the nation of Vietnam. Uh, in essence, the, the Vietnamese government has invited our church body to, to establish a, a seminary there. So uh, just a, a marvelous opportunity and... Uh, now, it's one of those doors of opportunity that the Lord has opened up, and we don't know how long it might be there. I suppose it could close down at any time, but uh, keep that in, in your thoughts and prayers as well. And then uh, I'd certainly like to thank you all for your, your words of encouragement and for your prayers for my mom as she... Um, well, let's see, it happened on Thursday. She went into the hospital in Valentine, and then they air ambulanced her to the University of Medical Center in Omaha, and uh, she was in the ICU there for a while. Then they transferred her to a, a regular room, and then by that evening, they released her from the hospital, So, uh, and she got home that night. Uh, so all that happened in the space of 
I don't know, 20 hours or something like that. But uh, anyway, she's doing doing quite well. But thank you much for your, your prayers and your, your concern there. Uh, appreciate that. I am hoping that uh, I'm planning this afternoon, probably leaving very shortly here to, to go that direction for uh, a couple of days for a, a short visit there. So if there should be need for uh, contacting me, you can, should be able to do that on my cell phone. With that, uh, we wish you the Lord's blessings once again as, as the Lord empowers us with his, his gospel uh, to, to focus our attention on the goal. Uh, may the Lord continue to bless us we, as we serve him. Thank you. Thank you.